Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I ask that you please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem. Our pledge will be led by our Vice President Class, Vice President Alana Massey, and the Star Spangled Banner will be sung by Alumna Class of 2018, Miss Jada Spite. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say, can you see What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the streaming in the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there what That's how it's done at the Arts Academy. You may be seated, please. At this time, we will have a welcome by our senior class president, Katara Willis. <laughs> Good morning. And welcome to the Buffalo Academy of Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you, family and friends, for joining us on this special day as we celebrate the class of 2019. A class of students who have worked diligently throughout their high school career. Today, we celebrate them and whisper silent prayers for them as they soon will make their way to college campuses, to the Navy, trade schools, the workforce, wherever they may go, and out into this world. It is only right we must first thank all of those who have poured into us with love, laughs, and endless support. Thank you, parents and loved ones. Without you, this day would have been unimaginable. And a special thank you to amazing women like our principal, Ms. Covington, and Mama Jones. Thank you. <laughs> to my seniors, as we seal a final stamp on this part of our lives, I remind you guys to find what you love, find find what you love, and commit to it. Be faithful, truthful, and when good days seem in, out of sight, show that how faith makes a man. Remember, anything easy, easily obtained is not worth having. Go out, go do great things, go be great. Thank you for an amazing year. I'm proud of you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the ceremony. Congratulations to the class of 2009. <laughs> Very nice, Katara. Thank you for those warm words of welcome. 
At this time, I would like to acknowledge our dais and our special guests that are here with us uh, this afternoon. Oh, it's still morning. No, it's afternoon. It's afternoon. We've got a number of people still coming in. If everyone could please find their seats quickly. The aisles must remain clear, and we ask everyone to please remain in their seats. Again, we have to make sure we're protecting everyone's sight lines so no one will say that they could not see or hear their child's name. On the dais, we have our administrative team, assistant principals, Mr. Jonathan Welka and Mrs. Rebecca Ryan, school guidance counselors, Mrs. Laveria and Mrs. Moore, Mr. Womack, and our senior class advisor, Mrs. Sheila Jones. From our central office representing the superintendent's cabinet, we have with us former principal, Mr. Now Dr. Darren Brown, and chief of staff of the Buffalo Board of Education. We also have with us, did Associate Wright didn't show? We have Director of Information and Technology, Mr. Bill Russo. We also have with us, representing our summer school offices, um, Mrs. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Capania. A special guest, alumna Jada Spite. Also, alumna Michelle Hare is with us. Let's give them a warm welcome. And our very special guest today, our keynote, the Honorable Erie County Legislator, nice win yesterday, April uh, Baskin, class of 2001. <laughs> to my left, we have our student representatives representing our National Honor Society. These students are our highest ranked academically students, as well as our class officers. Let's give them a nice warm welcome. <laughs> We will now have a message from our superintendent, uh, Dr. Cash, uh, representing uh, his speech will be uh, Taya Albina. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Dear high school graduate, congratulations to you. On behalf of the Buffalo Board of Education and the entire Buffalo Public School District, I applaud you on the milestone accomplishment of earning a high school diploma. You have worked incredibly hard over the past several years. As you celebrate your high school diploma, enjoy the moment. You worked hard for it. Remember everyone who supported you along the way. Thank them and make them proud by applying the lessons you've learned going forward. As college students and as part of the workforce, you will be more independent than you have ever been. From now on, there is no question that the first responsibility to succeed rests firmly within you. The world has opened up to you and is waiting. Look for your place in it. Know that a job well done is often its own reward, but that the willingness to always do your best can pay off in immeasurable ways also. Strive to have others see you at your best, and they will strive to be their best for you in turn. Wishing the best for you, the superintendent. Thank you, Taya. At this time, we will have the presentation of gifts from the class of 2019. Each year, the class uh, gifts um, a wonderful uh, gift to the school. Uh, and we acknowledge the class of 2019 for the gift that they will be honoring us with today. Talk about it a little bit. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So today I will be love to present to you the senior class gift of 2019. Um, this is a painting done by our students um, and I'll have, hold this picture for her and Alana will tell you the vision of this painting. Okay, so this gift was done by our very own students. I wanted to do something that was made by the students for the students. Um, this is for the whole building from the littlest fresh, fifth grader freshman to the biggest senior. But this gift is mostly dedicated to Mr. George. It is a reminder for everybody. 
that though you may not know where your gift may lead, identify the journey, enjoy the path, and make the most of it. Very nice. Thank you, class of 2019. We will be sure to hang that mural uh, somewhere here in our building. Thank you again. I would like to take a moment. Um, this morning was a very tough morning. Uh, this moment is a very tough moment for us here uh, at the Arts Academy. Um, when I entered this morning, I received notice that one of our students that was to be here today uh, graduating uh, entered ICU uh, this morning. Um, and is uh, in pretty tough shape. And so he was not able to be with us uh, this morning. We want to keep him in our thoughts and prayers, and um, the family will be with us later this afternoon to receive uh, his diploma. Um, so it saddened me, uh, saddens me to uh, have to acknowledge uh, the student in this way, but we certainly want to remember him and to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, it is student Alfonso Rodriguez Escalera, and we want to take a moment to have a moment of silence um, for him. Thank you. We will now present students with a series of awards. Again, uh, students, when your names are called, come on up. Um, and receive your award. We ask parents again to please remain in your seat. Pictures will be taken by our professional photographer and faculty member, Mr. Riffle, and you will have these uh, photos online um, by maybe this afternoon. The first award is the Philip L. Alfanara Award. It is presented to the 12th grade boy and girl who best exemplifies excellence in the arts and academics. The winners receive a plaque and a monetary award. This award was established by the first principal of the Arts Academy, Mr. Lafanara's family established this award. And we, uh, this is a very important award for us here at the Arts Academy. So selecting students becomes uh, very tough because uh, again, we want the student to exemplify these, uh, these characteristics. Um, these recipients this year are Matthew Wilson and Adrian Mayloff. The next award is a very special award also. Um, it, is, it was established by alumni. Um, many graduates from the Arts Academy, including myself, um, thought to do a special acknowledgement for a student that graduated many years ago, class of 1992, uh, Jonathan Kroom. He was a fallen firefighter. He died some years ago. He was a visual art major here at the Arts Academy. And a number of fundraisers and donations poured in every year. Uh, alumni give back to remember Jonathan Kroom and to offer a scholarship to a visual arts student because Jonathan Kroom was a visual arts student. His mother is usually here every year for the past 10 years. She's been here to present this award, but this is his 10th year anniversary that uh, we lost uh, Jonathan and it was pretty tough for her. So uh, to present this award today, uh, we have with us a member from our faculty, Mr. Herring will present this award. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. This $500 scholarship was created to honor the life of Jonathan S. Kroom. Jonathan was an alumnus and visual art major class of 1992. After graduation, he became a Buffalo firefighter and dedicated his life to the service of others. Jonathan passed away on August 24, 2009 in the line of duty. It was a great loss to his friends, family, and community. To honor his commitment to serving his family and loved ones, the alumni created this scholarship open to a visual art major who embodied Jonathan's spirit of love of arts, commitment to family, community service, and well-being of others. His greatest joy was his love of life, family, and friends. An avid athlete, he spent his time playing sports, exercising, and competing in local races. 
Jonathan has, was best known for his great smile, warm personality, his sense of humor, which knew no bounds, and he could make light of any situation. Anything he worked at was done with great pride and courage. So as a dedicated firefighter, his last act of heroism came as no surprise to those who knew and loved him. As a son, he was perfect. Jonathan would be overwhelmed and pleased by this year's scholarship winner. The recipient of this year's scholarship is Ezekiel Miner. The next award will be presented by Mrs. Larrabee. This is our visual uh, art purchase award. Since 1991, the Visual Art Department has met, looked over artwork for the graduating class, and has chosen one piece to add to the permanent collection and dis by display um, in the East Ferry entrance. I am very pleased to present this year's purchase award of $100 to a hardworking, prolific, creative artist, Desiree Niles. <laughs> Desiree's work is here to my right, and as Mrs. Larrabee indicated, it will be showcased on our Purchase Award wall at our East Ferry Street uh, entrance. The next scholarship is a scholarship established by an alumni. Um, she is here with us today, and uh, she established this award a few years back because she wanted to give back to her alma mater. She's a great friend of mine, and here to present the Michelle D. Hare Scholarship is Ms. Hare. Class of 1993. Greetings. Hello. Hello. Greetings to the faculty, staff, and guests, family, and friends of the Buffalo Academy for Visual and Performing Arts. I am a proud graduate of this school, and I hope you all are too. Big congratulations to the talented and dynamic seniors 2019. I'm so excited for you all. I am honored to be here today to present a deserving senior with an award for her to recognize her exemplary community service, outstanding academic achievement, and love and promotion of the arts. The 2019 recipient, the fifth recipient of the Michelle D. Hare Bavpa Legacy Scholarship is Ms. Adrienne Mayloff. Congratulations, Adrian, and thank you, um, Ms. Hare, for again giving back to your alma mater each year. The next award, um, a lot of people think about the Arts Academy. They love to give money back, so this is, this is great. So when you all start making good money, make sure you remember us. The Robert Fowler Scholarship. I got a call a few months ago uh, from the family of Mr. Fowler. I don't know Mr. Fowler, but they thought of our school and our students because they felt that our school uh, exemplifies the spirit that um, in the life of Mr. Fowler. And so they donated $500 um, to a deserving student, a student that they felt would also exemplify and exhibit uh, the characteristics of Mr. Fowler. Um, and they plan to establish a scholarship every year, so we'll get money from the Fowler family every year. The Robert Fowler Award was established by the family of the late Robert Fowler. Mr. Fowler was a master icon in the field of advertisement. 
By walking the streets of Buffalo, Mr. Fowler became self-taught about the fine architecture and incorporating such value in his advertisement. Mr. Fowler's family is awarding a $500 scholarship to a student that represents his character of being a visionary, hardworking, and creative. The student selected this year is Miss London Steiner. The next few awards in this order. The Board of Education Exemplar Award will be presented by Mr. Welka. The Sherman Filer Award will be presented by Mrs. Ryan. The Buffalo Teachers Federation Award will be presented by Mrs. Laveria. The American Federation of School Administrators will be presented by me. Good afternoon, everyone and congratulations, graduates. The Board of Education Exemplar Award is presented to both a 12th and 8th grade boy or girl who has contributed substantially to fostering an atmosphere of mutual understanding, respect, and acceptance in his or her school community. The 12th grade winner will receive a clock. This year's recipient is Adaya H. Good afternoon, graduates. Congratulations. Okay, the Sherman Filer Award is presented to an outstanding 12th and 8th grade boy and girl on the basis of the candidate's scholastic excellence, leadership qualities, activities in civic affairs, personality and attitude toward country and neighbor. This year's recipients are Katara Willis and Matthew Wilson. Hello everybody. The Buffalo Teachers Federation Award. This is awarded to both a 12th and 8th grade student who is outstanding. The winner receives a certificate and monetary award from the faculty. This year's recipient is Mira Oma. The American Federation of School Administrators Award. This leadership award is presented on behalf of school administrators to recognize outstanding student leadership in our school and wider community by a graduating senior. The winner receives a certificate and a monetary gift. This year's recipient is Alana Massey. The next awards, the Florence Johnson Perseverance Award will be presented by Mr. Womack, the Outstanding Attendance Award will be presented by Mrs. Moore, and the WKBW Award will be presented by Mr. Riffle. Good afternoon. Congratulations, class of 2019. The Florence Johnson Perseverance Award is awarded to the 12th grade student who has overcome insurmountable obstacles to arrive at graduation. The student should be one who demonstrated commitment to do better. 
has good attendance and is economically disadvantaged. This year's recipient, Valerie Diaz Perez. graduates. <laughs> Congratulations, you guys look beautiful. <laughs> the Outstanding Attendance Award. This award is to honor and recognize the dedication and passion of a student by exhibiting commitment to school attendance in their senior year. The recipient receives a certificate and a monetary gift. The award is presented to Adrian Mayloff. You guys look so good. Congratulations. The awards. All right. So I'm honored to present the WKBW Award, which has been going on now for 20 years. WKBW has been a wonderful partner to our school and to our communication arts department. Each year they award a graduating communication arts major with a $500 scholarship. So this year they decided to split it, submitted the work, and the um, I'm just honored to present this. I also won this award when I graduated uh, 15 years ago. So it's my honor to award it to the following two students, Stephanie Vasquez and Brandon Roshko. Congratulations. There's a panel at WKBW and they watch their work and they, they choose these two. So they went in blind not knowing who they were and they based it just on their final product. So I'm super proud of them. Give it up one more time. The next award are um, to present to two students. They are the uh, students that will receive the principal's award. And when selecting the recipients of the principal's award, the students that are considered is one boy and girl who are over the years have exemplified the mission and vision of our school. They are most deserving of special recognition for exemplary achievement, for overcoming obstacles, and having made a significant contribution to the quality of life in our school and in the arts academics, and in their overall respect and character. Today, we honor Katara Willis and Matthew Wilson. Now to our Salutatorian Award. Our next uh, awardee is the Salutatorian for the class of 2019. The honor of Salutatorian is bestowed upon the graduate with the second highest cumulative grade point average during their career at the Arts Academy. Please help me to recognize the Salutatorian for the class of 2019, Ms. Taya Albino.
Taya Albino. Our valedictorian award is presented to the student with the highest GPA for their four years at the Arts Academy. We will hear from our valedictorian. It is bestowed upon the graduate with the highest cumulative grade point average during their career here at the Arts Academy. Please help me to recognize and hear from our valedictorian for the class of 2019, Ms. Milan Hawkins. Well, first, um, I feel like during the ceremony, I really haven't heard any of the seniors. Like, are you guys here today? We're graduating. Thank you. I want to hear that. Okay, time to be serious. <laughs> Good afternoon, parents, teachers, family, and students. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate the class of 2019. We have worked hard these last four years, and we can finally say we did it. We conquered it. We finished. Mostly. So as we move on, we are the last class of this decade, 2019, okay? We're about to set new trends. We are about to use our voices to make real noise, and we're about to make a world that we want to live in. As I say this, I'm not diminishing any other generation. I know I'm looking at a lot of adults. I'm not calling you guys out. I'm just simply letting you know the best is yet to come. Looking into this crowd today, I see all of my fellow peers, and I'm proud of the success we have achieved together. Because in this school, I've come across the most driven, the most ambitious, and the most inspiring individuals. I will miss you all and the energy you all inspire to be and do something greater. Outside of these four walls we have become accustomed to lies a world full of so many possibilities and fate. And while many have said anything is possible and followed your dreams, I want to share some insight. Leaving this building means leaving behind a comfort zone that you have thrived in. But outside is a world full of harsh realities and unspoken truths. Life will be hard. It will try you, as we say. <laughs> Sorry. Um, life will be hard. But nevertheless, once you know and accept that, you will really succeed. Many of us look upon each other and see something better than what we currently have. And what I say to that is the infamous, do not compare your chapter, tw your chapter five to your, somebody else's chapter 25. You can't do it. Come on. <laughs> Failure is inevitable for all of us because we live in a world with a population of almost eight million people. So not all of us can have a spotlight with our name on it. But through a series of rotations, I promise you, each and every one of you will have your moment. First, going out into this world, I wanna let you know something, that you cannot care about anything too much because, like I said, the world will let you down. But find something that you ultimately care about and strive for it, because I see a destiny where anything is possible for all of us sitting here. Second, be realistic with yourself. Know what you are capable of. Know what you are incapable of, because the truth can never be hidden, and plus, it saves you a lot of time, energy, and money for some of us going to college, trade schools, you know, and other pathways. Thirdly, being exceptional is totally overrated because it allows you to believe that someone got so inherently lucky in their lives and that the world owes you something. This is quite the contrary because people are amazing because they found something they truly cared about, developed an obsession for improvement, and these people realized that they weren't great to begin with, but they did not settle for mediocrity. These people believed in something my parents tell me each and every day. Life is about preparation meeting opportunity. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you. Um, I'm not gonna lie and say I've always lived by these truths. I simply discovered them and I wanted to share them today. I did live by ideals of perfectionism and that the world is mine for the taking. 
And while the world is always giving you chances to succeed, it's another word that begins with the letter P that makes you truly strive for greatness. And that is progression. You have to keep going. And as Ms. Swick was probably over there, she's not over there anymore, but uh, here, okay, she always tells me, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I urge you all to keep progressing in life because you want to live in a world and a moment that you are going to be happy with, that you're going to want to be grateful for. And I say to that, that it's not going to be easy, but you are to strive to greatness because we are all meant to level up. Now, I leave you with these last words. Now, let's get these diplomas and let's get to work. Period. I really do, I love you all. Congratulations, class of 2019, forever. Nice job, valedictorian. Let's give her another round of applause for those words. A lot of wisdom for a young lady. Next, we will hear from our keynote for today, the Honorable April N. M. Baskin, Erie County Legislator, District 2. And just to give you a little bit of background on her bio, um, as a Buffalo native, Honorable April Baskin is passionate about community development for social change. In 2015, Ms. Baskin developed the College Simulation Experience, which uses arts-based experimental learning to increase college retention rates in low-income populations in Western New York. She is dedicated to using creative learning methods as a platform for equipping youth who are lacking in resources with the tools needed to, fulfill, to fully take advantage of the advancing educational opportunities afforded to them. Ms. Baskin holds a BA in Theater Arts from SUNY Empire State College and is currently pursuing a graduate degree in higher education administration and student affairs at Buffalo State College. She's a member of the Buffalo Urban League Young Professionals, was honored with their Community Engagement Award in May 2017, and Ms. Baskin was also honored with the Woman Touching the World Award by Unlimited Possibilities Overcoming Poverty Incorporated. She serves on the Empire State Poverty Reduction Initiatives Buffalo Task Force, is a member of the NAACP Buffalo Chapter, Leadership Niagara Class of 2017, and a graduate of the All-State Minority and Women Emergency Entrepreneurs Program sponsored by the University of Buffalo. In November 2017, Ms. Baskin was elected to represent District 2 of the Erie County Legislature in the state of New York. As a freshman legislator, she was immediately selected to serve her caucus as the majority leader and chair the Public Safety Minority and Women Business Entrepreneurship Committees. In 2019, she was elevated to the position of chairperson of the full legislature, being named the youngest chairperson in the Erie County body. Most importantly, she is a graduate of the Buffalo Academy for Visual Performing Arts. Yeah. And today, she has come home to share her wisdom and to show her love to her alma mater. Please join me in welcoming Honorable April Baskin. Thank you. Thank you. OK, PA. 18 years ago, when I was a senior, me and my peers, no matter where we went, if it was the mall, if it was a restaurant, when performing arts was in the building, we'd go, P.A.? All day, is that how we do it now? Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, you all look so very beautiful. And I want to just take this time to express how extremely honored I am to be here with you all and your families to celebrate one of the proudest moments in your life. I want to take a moment to thank Ms. Uh, Principal Jody Covington for that wonderful introduction and allowing me to share with you and your teachers and your counselors, your aides and your support staff, everyone who has pushed you today to reach your goals. We are here to celebrate each and every one of you. Now, we want to make sure that we also acknowledge those who pushed us outside of these school walls, those who pushed us at home. So how about we give it up not just for our graduates or our educators, but also every parent, every grandparent, every aunt, go ahead, every uncle, every sister, brother, cousin, friend, 
neighbor, after school counselor. They matter, right? They participated. They are the ones who would yell at you to get out of the bed. They are the ones who helped you make flashcards. They are the ones who helped you read over your paper before you turned it in. They were the ones who annoyed you to get off Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat, is it called? Snapchat. When your homework wasn't done, they too are here celebrating your efforts. We are all celebrating their sacrifices and their love as well. So a round of applause to all of you. Now, before we move too far forward, I want to ask for a little bit of participation. We're going to do some more hand clapping. And this time, it's not just for you guys graduating, but it's for a lot of things that you guys have overcome. While you clap, I want you to picture these things in your mind. I want you to clap for every homework assignment that you missed. I want you to clap. <laughs> it's a, it a lot of missed homework. I want you to clap for every test that you failed. <laughs> I want you to clap for every time you made it to homeroom after 8.20. And last but not least, you got to clap for every single time you sat in a classroom and wondered, why am I here? When is the bell going to ring? The reason why you're clapping is because despite all of those things, despite late nights and early mornings, despite breakups with your loved ones, despite obstacles that you faced over the last couple of years, you still stayed in the game, and you still made it here today. All right. Now, you've done enough work in this building, so I'm not going to make you clap anymore. Now you can rest. I was excited to come and speak at this co commencement, and I agreed for two reasons. One, I am a graduate of PA all day, <laughs> and like you, I also am standing here someone that is talented. I have a skill set in the arts. And so it's always wonderful for me to be around fellow artists. So I'm very, very excited about that. I also wanted to do it because I feel like I have one final lesson for you before you walk out of this building as a graduate today. If you leave here, I want you to leave here with one thing understand one of my favorite Bible scriptures. The race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither the bread given to the wise, but time and chance happen to them all. Life is not a race, and it is not measured one by speed or time, but it is measured based on distance and completion. I was born and raised here in Buffalo. And I cannot stand here and tell you truthfully today that I am the woman who I am, the youngest person in the history of Erie County to chair the legislature of the county. If it had not been, if it had not been for going through some hard things, for feeling like a failure, feeling like I could not complete the race. I grew up on the west side of Buffalo. So, whoa, West Side is in the building. What? <laughs> so believe me when I tell you that I continue to and I face some of the things that you are facing. I see the violence in our communities and I hear the sirens at night. I see the boarded up homes on our streets and I hear the cries of families struggling to keep it together. Yet. When I look around this room, I know that there is another side to that. There are people who know how to rise above that and still make it to graduation day. I know what it's like to be a single parent working two and three jobs just to put food on a table. Give it up for single parents in the building. I know what it's like to have to depend on the NFTA in the dead of winter in Buffalo. It's real to get to where you need to go. But I also know what it means to succeed despite all of those things. I stand here 
today with a very hoarse voice because last night I was screaming the entire night. Yesterday was primary day here in uh, Erie County in the state of New York, and I won my first re-election. Now, two years ago, I won that election against three other men by just 308 votes. Yesterday, I won that race by almost 2,000 votes. Today, I feel like a winner, and I was screaming all night long, but I was not always the person who felt like a winner. When I went to Performing Arts Academy, it was not in this lovely building, it was at 333 Clinton Street. Give it up if you remember 333 Clinton Street. <laughs> there were three types of math classes that you could take. You could take Algebra A, you could take Algebra B, or you could take Algebra R. Now, Algebra A was a slower pace of math, and then Algebra B speeded it up a little bit before you, and you split those between Algebra A, freshman year, Algebra B, sophomore year. Or you could just enter freshman year and take Algebra R. R stood for Regents, and that was Algebra A, Algebra B, all in one course. Now, for some reason, I never, ever figured out why, but when I came in as a fresh, when I came in to freshman year, I started out in fifth grade. How many people have been here since fifth grade? Oh, we still do that. <laughs> Almost half of our class that I graduated with was there from fifth grade. When I started freshman year, I was immediately put into Algebra R. I still remember the teacher's name, Ms. Frey Mason. And I sat in, y'all remember Ms. Frey? Oh, okay. <laughs> Ms. Frey was my freshman year math teacher for Algebra R. I struggled desperately in math. I was a horrible math student. And I failed that math class. I went to summer school for Algebra R. While everybody else was having fun over the summer, I had to go to summer school at what was then Grover Cleveland, because I'm from the west side. <laughs> and after summer school, I failed Algebra R again. I returned back to performing arts sophomore year. They put me back in Algebra R. I failed it. Had to go to summer school Again, taking Algebra R now for the fourth time. In summer school that summer, while everybody was out having fun, I was taking Algebra R, and I failed it. I had to go back to performing arts that year as a junior. Now there's other underclassmen in the math class. How do you think that made me feel? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I took Algebra R again as a junior. Failed it. Everybody else going, having, going on vacation, having fun over the summer. I was at summer school. Junior year, took it again, failed it. Right? Y'all feel bad for me, right? I won yesterday, though. <laughs> You never underestimate a comeback. So senior year, I'm walking into 333 Clinton Street. As a senior, you feel good. Senior year is the year of the prom. Senior year is when you get finally a good part in the play. Senior year is when you start taking pictures for the yearbook. Senior year is supposed to be fun. And there I was in Algebra R for the seventh time. Seventh time, failed it every year, and then failed it every summer school. You had to take the exam in summer school. And they said to me, my guidance counselor at the time, they said, April, you don't have any math credits, and you cannot walk across the stage for graduation if you do not have any math credits. So here's what you have to do. Not only do you have to take Algebra R this year as a senior with all those freshmen and sophomores, but then after school, there will be no softball, there will be no yearbook, there will be no Black History Month program rehearsal, there will be no spring dance concert, there will be no art galleries and fun courses to take after school with all your friends. You're going to get on the bus, you're going to go to Bennett, and you're going to take another math course at night school. Now, I don't know the reputation of Bennett now, but back then, Bennett Night School were for two types of students. Either boys who got in trouble because they was in gangs and fighting and nobody wanted them in the school during the school day, or girls who were expecting children. And I was not either. And so I felt out of place. So all year, senior year, I took Algebra R, 
And then I would get on the two Clinton, go downtown, get on the train, go to Bennett, and stay there all night to get an extra math credit. And by the grace of God, I was able to pass Algebra R. Sometimes you just need a little fire under you. But I was so defeated and so embarrassed, and I struggled so terribly. And even though I was victorious and I was able to walk across the stage with the class of 2001 at Klein Hands Music Hall 18 years ago, I still had a lot of discouragement that stayed with me all through college. It resulted in me dropping out of college. It resulted in me developing a lot of fears of having to deal with math ever again. And then I moved to New York City to pursue a career in uh, theater, and I was presented with an opportunity to be an arts teacher. And I was gonna get summers off, I was gonna make a lot of money, and I was gonna be able to do what I loved, which was teach the arts. And the principal was ready to give me a job that day. And he asked me, what's your degree in, April? And I said, well, I don't have my degree. And he said, well, why not? And I said, well, I struggle with math, and so I just dropped out of college. And he said, well, that's disappointing. In order to teach, you need a degree. And that was the first time in my life that I really understood that not taking hold of that trauma that I had gone through or those fears, it caused me to not be able to take advantage of an opportunity later in life. And I don't ever want you all to be faced with that. So I encourage you to face your fears, face your algebra R class, whatever it may be. Don't let it determine who you are. If there's something that you're not good at, you need to push through it and don't ever, ever quit. So this, students, is your final lesson today. Do not ever let one person or agency or institution or group establish your life's finish line. Society has already tried to set the standard for you. You finish school and you finish college and you get a degree and you get a high paying job, you're supposed to get married, you're supposed to have children, you're supposed to have a white picket fence, you're supposed to live the American dream. I don't have to tell you that these are the things that they try to feed us every single day. But there is no motivational speech or no plan that anybody can tell you for you to live your best life. You move forward on your own terms. You do not join the military because you're told to join the military, but you join because you want to serve your country. And you don't run for office just because somebody recruits you. You run for office because you want to make the community a better place. No one cares if you had the fastest starting time. All they care about is if you finish the race. No one cares about the fly running shoes that you wear during the race. All they care about is if you finish the race. You finish the race on your terms and you pace yourself. You take a break, you take a day off. And when you feel like it's your time to stand up and take an opportunity and rise, you do it on your own terms. I am so very proud of each and every single one of you today. Remember, the race is not given to the swift, but it's given to the person that pushes forward and gets to the finish line and makes it past their first reelection. That is the person <laughs> who finishes the race. <laughs> Define your race, finish it. Know that I am very proud of you and nothing excites me more than the potential sitting in front of me right now. You are all amazing and nothing says potential and possibility more than the people looking back at me right now. May God bless you and may you have much success on your race. Let's give the Honorable April Baskin another round of applause for those words of wisdom. We really appreciate that. Okay, the time we've been waiting for, the awarding of the diplomas, yes. Again, audience, uh, families, we ask that you please remain in your seats. Please keep the aisles clear. 
and pictures will be available for you, okay? Kaiser Acosta. <laughs> Noah Adamson. <laughs> Taya Albino. <laughs> Sanaya Allen. Casey Appenheimer. Adaya H. Michael Bailey. Ayana Balden. Jada Banks. Allison Bednars. Jamari Bell. Dylan Benedict. Sincere Benefield. Taylor Butler. Kyra Cannon. Janelli Carasquillo. Victoria Carol O'Connor. Brianna Caro. Jalen Carter Keith. <laughs> Eric Castillo. Jasmine Chiak. Lasharice Cleveland. Cache Cobb. Shayana Cook. Claudia Kriptoff. Steven Cruz. Sean Daniels. Jayla Davis. Karina De Jesus. <laughs> Valerie Diaz Perez. <laughs> Anneli Delan. <laughs> Quinshana Douglas. <laughs> Garrison Embler. Talia 
Evans. Summer Ferguson. Kiana Garland. Isaiah Gathers. Odin Gonzalez. Christopher Gordon. Tallulah Gordon. Jayana Harrison. Milan Hawkins. Samuel Hayes. Alani Henderson. Leilani Hooks. Brooklyn Huff. Naira Howard. Nairi Jackson. Labrina Johnson. Treasure Johnson. Erica King. Caleb Cranach. Marquis Lacey. Molly Lures. Victoria Lopez. Steven Luambekdi. Adrian Maylock. Matthew Marrero. Mariana Martinez. Alana Massey. Rachel McClellan. Marcus McConnell. Alexis McCullough. Bianca McDaniel. Jeffrey McMillan Jr. Ezekiel Minor. Desiree Knowles. Mira Oma. Michael Owens. Antonin Polka Mikes. Naeem Paris. Eric Pittorf. Carmen Purdue. Brandon Rasco. Jenna Rodriguez. Vivian Rose. Yeah. 
Brene Salam. Will Dead, Sanabria Morales. Courtney Sanders. Andre Sawyer. Maya Scryer. Justice Skillen. London Steiner. Melina Sweeney. Renaja Thomas. Shania Thompson. Jada Tolbert. Santos Torres Jr. Zulema Trinidad. Delena Valdivia. Reina Vanderwerf. Stephanie Vasquez. Haley Velasquez. Antoine Walker. Cheyenne Watkins. Kayana Watkins. JL Whitus. Christian Whitlock. Romario Wilkerson. Diamond Williams. Katara Willis. Caitlin Willis. Wilson, sorry. Matthew Wilson. Cherish Woodard. Mikkel Woodruff. Chanel Wright. Shanice Wright. Rachel Young.
the class of 2019 would please rise. By the, by the power vested in me by the state of New York and the Buffalo Board of Education. Yes, PA, okay. We're, oh, okay, all right. By the power vested in me by the state of New York and the Buffalo Board of Education, I officially pronounce you graduates of the Buffalo Academy for Vision and Performing Arts. You may move your tassels from right to left. Congratulations, 2019. Congratulations. Congratulations, class of 2019. Parents, thank you. Families, thank you so much for entrusting us with your children's education. We celebrate you.